The University of Texas at El Paso College of Engineering, in collaboration with Holly Burton, presents Uncertainty. Before going to the uncertainty analysis, we must be clear about the difference between measurement error and measurement uncertainty. Measurement error is the difference between the true value and the measured value, for example, a specific value. Measurement uncertainty estimate the error in a measurement, for example, a range of possible values of the error. Because we rarely know the true value of a measurement, we cannot compute the measurement error. Rather, we estimate the measurement uncertainty. For example, using a transducer to make measurements of a measurement on a representative sample of articles, for example, using a vernier caliper to measure the th diameter of 30 machine shafts. In this case, we are seeking to compute the uncertainty in our estimate of the population mean based on a subset of the population, a sample. We will compute a confidence interval for the population. The first step is to compute the sample mean, where n is the population size and xi is a value corresponding to each sample. Then, you need to calculate the standard deviation. And finally, the confidence interval. This part over here is called random error. For case number two, using a transducer to make measurements of a measurement on a single article, for example, using a vernier caliper to measure a single shaft diameter. In this case, we use the resolution of the caliper to estimate the error. Our vernier caliper's smallest divisions are 0 0.02 millimeter, giving a measurement uncertainty of plus minus 0 0.01 millimeter for all the readings. Like in any additional data, we take the measurement uncertainty of a transducer to be one half of the smallest division. This is called the bias error. But now the question arises. If we have a functional relationship between two or more measured quantities, how is the uncertainty in the computer value related to the measurement uncertainties in the parameters? For example, force is equals mass times acceleration. Knowing delta M and delta A measures the uncertainties of mass and acceleration, compute delta F, which is the uncertainty of the force. In a more general form, this problem can be written as the following formula, where R is a function of the N measured quantities. From calculus, we know that the change in R delta r results from small changes, which are called uncertainties, in x1, x2, and so on, which is given by the following formula. If we define the small changes delta s as uncertainties w, x, i, we get the following formula. Because some uncertainties w, x, i may be positive and some negative, they might cancel each other out. We adjust this by using absolute value to gain the maximum uncertainty. Finally, we need finally we denote that WR max presumes all uncertainties are at the extreme values. This is probably unrealistic, so we define the accepted definition of uncertainty as the following formula. For a given parameter xi, the measurement error wxi is computed as the combination of the random error component of the measurement on case 1, and bias or systematic error component on case 2. For example, the uncertainty in the volume calculation of a rectangular block. The volume is given by the following formula. The maximum uncertainty is given by the following formula. 
Each derivative is computed as follow. The final formula plugging in the derivatives will look something like this. Two interrectangular blocks of dimension x width by white height by c depth were measured with a vernier caliper having a least count of 0.02 millimeter. Estimate the uncertainty in the volume of the blocks as calculated from this data. First, we calculate the average dimensions for x, y, and z. Then, the standard deviation. After that, the value of t distribution at 95% confidence level. Then, the confidence interval. Then, the bias error. Then, we take the uncertainties for dimensions. And finally, the volume uncertainty estimate given by this formula and plugging in all the values that we got from the previous operations, we get the final result. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe.